Welcome to Library of Connection. I'm Mandy Cantrell from the B.B. Comer Memorial Library. Before I get started, I want to thank TV47, Chris, and everyone here that enables us to put on this program for you to tell you about things going on in the community and things that, of course, connect to us at the li library. This is a very timely program. I think I have Jacob Turner joining me from the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. Thank yep. you so much for Not being here. Not a problem. Here. Not a problem. I know people are getting ready. They're getting oh, yes. their lawns ready. They're thinking about gardening. My husband has all the tomato seed catalogs <laughs> at home looking at it. So uh, I, I, that's why I, I wanted to have you on. People are, are doing things like that. I want to talk about the way that the Cooperative Extension can help us. Right. Uh, before we get started, mm -hmm. Jacob, tell us about yourself. So I'm born and raised in Oxford in Calhoun okay. County. Uh, went to Gadsden State out of high mm -hmm. school. Did not really want to do what I was doing. and. Mm -hmm. Found my way to Auburn, uh, okay. went through uh, Auburn, got a degree in landscape horticulture. Yeah. Went to work, came back home, uh, worked for Oxford City Schools for a while, mm -hmm. maintaining athletic fields and all okay. the turf and ornamentals outside of schools. And then it was time for a change. And then all I found right. my way to Extension. So I've been yeah. with Extension now for six months and it's it's been fun. Right, it's been right. Fun. War Eagle, I'm an Auburn yes, grad, so hey. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been with them six months and I know this is, this is a very busy time, it or is. maybe all the time is well, busy. This, I don't is, know. this is a very busy time of Gosh, the year. Gosh, yes, very busy. I know. Um, I guess people, like I said, my husband's got the seed mm -hmm. catalogs out. He's thinking about, he's planting some seeds right. to keep in our basement for a while. What This is a really broad question. Right. What should we be doing now to get ready well, to plant a garden? <laughs> so the first thing I would say is to take a soil test. Okay. Uh, we've got soil test kits at our office. There's some up at the uh, Talladega Co-op that we've got up there okay. too. Um, you can take the soil sample, send those into Auburn, get okay. the soil test results, okay. results. And if you don't understand it, I'll be happy to go over it and answer those questions. Because um, that's going to give us, you know, our, our soil pH, mm -hmm. our fertilizer recommendations, everything that we need to know um, to, for, to start the garden. Right. Um, okay. After that, we need to start thinking about how we're, what we're going to plant, uh, mm -hmm. plan, out, plan it, lay out our garden area. Are we going to plant in containers? Are we going to plant in the ground? raised beds, all those topics, and then start seeds, if we're starting seeds, or okay. if we're buying transplants. Okay. So I, I still think we're probably three, four <clears throat> weeks away from getting ready to set a tomato in the ground. Right. And I'm it's ready. It's pretty cold today. It's, <laughs> it's, it's dropping today, so yeah. we'll see, we'll see. So I've got some tomatoes oh. myself that are ready to go in the ground. Oh. And I'm like, okay, I started them a little early, but I had to. So <laughs> right, it's right. part You're of being ready. an extension, you get to start stuff early. <laughs> My husband will be jealous now. He loves tomatoes. Uh, well, and I know um, I can look online. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, we have a lot of books on plants. Plant Coach, A Year in the Edible Garden, The Garden Maker's Book of Wonder. These are wonderful as re reference tools, but sometimes you just want to talk to someone. Oh, yes. And that's what y'all do. Y'all provide exactly this service. That's what we do. For, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're, anybody can call our office or email us, however, get in touch with mm -hmm. us, and we'll be glad to answer questions, whether you've got home garden questions, that would be me, right. um, commercial horticulture, that goes to somebody else. Okay. So we've got different agents for different things, you know, uh, cattle problems, cattle questions, okay. um, forestry questions, <clears throat> uh, food preservation, different topics. We've pretty much got somebody that covers it. Yeah. And I want to tell you, your website is very easy to, to look at. I mean, I, I could find, that's where I found your name. Right. <laughs> and it tells what you do, and that's right. what we kind of wanted the show to be about. So, uh, And the website is the Taldega County Extension So that's, Service. You can Google yes. that. It's just aces.edu. Right. Aces.edu. Yes, that's right. Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. I have to remember all those words. <laughs> oh, but that's, yes. <laughs> it's very easy. You've got so many topics. At oh, the, we do. Uh, we do. Yeah. So, you know, part of Extension is we're, we're half Auburn, half Alabama, A&M. Okay. Um, so A&M covers more of the urban <clears throat> stuff. So um, they, they do have urban home grounds just like I do. Right. Um, but they cover stuff with family problems, uh, financial stuff, different yes. stuff like that, that we cover more of the ag side, they cover more of the <clears throat> family science stuff. Wow, so. that, but all under one. Under We're all under one name. <coughs> We're all me. one big team. <laughs> that's so, great, yep. that's great. Um, now, is there a charge for your services? Now, I understand if there's a class right. you're taking. So, yes. no, no ma'am, mm -hmm. there is no charge for us. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. if there is a class, there is a charge for that sure. most of the time. Sometimes yeah. they're free, it just depends on 
if what materials that we have involved yeah. with it, if we've got food or, you know, if we've gone and bought plants or given plants away, we try to make up sure. just to cover our cost. But other than that, most of the time it's free. That's great. And I know my husband has taken some of your classes, some online, some right. in person. COVID, I guess, caused everybody oh, yes. to offer things online. Yes. So, um, Which kind of helped us in a sense because yeah. like our Master Gardener <clears throat> program mm -hmm. kind of changed the way it works. And so now it's, it's mostly online, but we do have an in-person part every week. Okay. So that, that is very good. That's great, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot, of, there is a wealth of information yes. on yes. your website and or how to find out about yes. that. That is great. Well, uh, okay, we talked about, a little bit about getting ready to plant. You mm -hmm. need to have your soils, uh, do a soil sample right. at Auburn. What do you do with the information? So you if you, uh, they'll send you a sheet and it'll <coughs> tell you, you know, your soil pH, the <coughs> fertilizer recommendations. And it pretty much, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty good information. Okay. Like I said, if you don't understand it, Call one of us, and okay. we'll be happy to try to answer those questions. Good, and good. And break it, break it down in layman terms. <clears throat> Sometimes it's not that easy to, <laughs> not that well, easy to understand. <laughs> well, if you're like me, it probably would be hard for me to understand. But you're there to help everybody. Right. I know. Right. Uh, what what kind of grass? I know you do mm -hmm. a lot of lawn care. What yes, kind of grass is best in our area? So I like Bermuda grass. Uh, it okay. takes the traffic. It takes the heat. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's just a all around well grass. Um, Centipede is another good one, just mm -hmm. because it's low maintenance. Uh, okay, it's typically yeah. called the poor man's grass, okay. and just because it doesn't require a lot of work, oh, okay. um, it, it'll take a little bit of the heat. Um, now it's going to check out, you know, when it gets when sure. we turn into a drought, sure. which most things will. <clears throat> so the, I like those two, and then you got zoysia. Those the, those are the top three, wow. I would say, for this area. Okay. Zoysia's got a really good look to it, also. Wow. So, so we re if you're like planting all mm -hmm. new grass, putting sod mm -hmm. out or something. You need to keep in mind the amount of sun it gets, oh, yes. I guess, the water, yep. and the amount of time you're willing yes. to put in it. That's the key right there, because mm -hmm. Bermuda grass is going to take a lot more time than okay. centipede is, okay. just because it needs more fertilizer than centipede. It, uh, and, you know, the best grass for shade is going to be pine straw. There is okay. no, there is <laughs> no right. grass that likes shade. Uh, oh, there's that's a true. little bit that can handle it, but not. <clears throat> Not much. I always try to send people, if there's a yeah. lot of shade, we need to be looking at pine straw or mulch. You know, right, extend that right. bed. Make a make a landscape right. area out of it other than grass. Look natural. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of other stuff besides grass, yes. I guess. Yeah, there all is. Right. So what do we need to be doing now? Is now the time to put out weed right. killer? So, so we're a little mm -hmm. late on pre-emerge. If, okay. if we're still needing to do some pre-emerge mm -hmm. for our turf grass, we need to get on that right now and then reapply it in about 40 days okay. uh, to try to catch up to it. We can be spraying some of our some of our broadleaf and grassy weeds have already popped up because okay. of this crazy weather we're having. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, we can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, just some other things like you can get p freshen up the pine straw mulch. Mm -hmm. um, most of the roses should have already been pruned by now, but okay. you know, we need to still do some pruning stuff. We still got yeah. some time. As stuff ends flowering, like right now, yellow bells have quit flowering. Now's the okay. perfect time to be pruning our, our yellow bells. Okay. Uh, so because they're getting ready to set their buds for next year, so oh, we want to go okay. ahead and prune those now. Um, and then you know, just little things. Uh, we've got you know, get the garden ready. We we right. kind of talked about that already. Yeah. Um, just you know, different things in the okay. yard. Just trying to make get ready for spring. Just planning. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to pause for commercial break, and we'll be right back and talk some more with Jacob. The Maxi Veazey Senior Adult Activity Center offers the senior citizens in the Sylacauga and surrounding areas lots of fantastic activities throughout the week. Sewing, ladies bridge, quilting, game-o-rama, ceramic classes, bingo, travel club, and lots more. It's all at the Maxi Veazey Senior Adult Activity Center located next to the J. Craig Smith Community Center in Sylacauga. Don't spend any more time alone. Get out, make new friends, and have fun. Coosa Valley Medical Center, one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama, is also Sylacauga's largest employer. Services from the emergency room, to surgery, to cancer treatment, to post-stroke care. You won't believe what's right in your backyard. It's Coosa Valley Medical Center in Sylacauga. So, if you're sick, in Alabama, choose one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama. That is Coosa Valley Medical Center. 
The all new Marble City Pharmacy in Sylacauga is your destination for the highest quality health care. Our remodeled and expanded pharmacy gives us the space to serve more patients. We've added a drive through window for those times when you don't feel like getting out of your vehicle. And we still offer delivery within city limits. We feature a full line of over the counter medications and supplements. And don't forget our stunning new gift department. New building, same great people. Marble City Pharmacy, here for life. Welcome back to Library Connection. I'm talking with Jacob Turner with the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. And your specialty is home grounds, mm -hmm. gardening, and home long pest. turf, yep. home pests. Oh, yes. we'll get into that in just yes. a few minutes. But um, <laughs> you were talking about getting gardens ready. Yes, what, now, I know there's a lot of different ways to garden. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have an acre you want mm -hmm. to garden with corn and tomatoes and potatoes and or maybe you just have a deck. You right. want to have some container gardening. Can right. you talk about some of sure. those yeah. different ways to garden? So like, like you said, there's plenty of different ways we can uh, do some different gardening, mm -hmm. whether it be with uh, containers. Containers mm -hmm. are a great way if you got a small area on a deck, right. uh, limit, limited space, containers mm -hmm. are way. Or if you've got a soil that doesn't really want to grow stuff. Oh, okay. I live on a street, it's named Stone Street. <laughs> So you can imagine what my soil is like. I it bet. is stones. Yes. So I'm in containers. <clears throat> um, but like I said, great for small areas, stuff like that. And the container size is going to determine our crop that we're growing. Okay. So peppers, I'm looking to keep those between three to five gallon containers. Okay. Um, my tomatoes, five gallons and bigger. Um, okay. And a single tomato in a five gallon bucket. And uh, so, you know, you have to start planning this stuff out of, okay, how many tomato plants can I have? How many buckets do I want to deal with or mm -hmm. nursery pots, stuff like that. The How other much? thing is with containers is we need to make sure we've got good drainage. Oh, so okay. in a five gallon bucket, I like at least five holes, five half inch holes in the bottom. Okay. So I that, probably have to write that down. <laughs> yeah, five that, gallon, five, that's nice. Yes. Yeah. So that's just an easy way to kind of remember that. And other thing too, what I would say is Look at your nursery pots and see how many holes they've got in them, and right. think you know these folks are growing these to sell, whereas right. in a con for container garden we're growing to eat. So that's, that's what they yeah. you know that's how they're making their living on them. We got to have pretty much okay. the same. That's so true. I like you know on, on containers you need a lot of holes in them, <clears throat> um, and on that we're just going to use pot and soil. We don't want to use topsoil or nothing like that. Pot and soil is uh, a little looser <coughs> than topsoil, so we want to keep that. <coughs> It's, it's a little difficult Pine to explain, soil. but a little softer soil, I guess okay. is the right word. Not as heavy as topsoil. Um, and then going, like you said, even up to an acre. Um, that's a little different, so we're gonna, that's in ground, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, till that up, plow it however you need to break that ground up. Right. And then we can probably add some organic matter, some compost okay. to it, stuff like that. Um, once again, soil test on that. Right. We don't do a soil test on potting soil because it's kind of more of a soilless medium. Okay. So that, we don't really do that, but we do soil tests for in ground stuff, okay. um, and that's a great way to start those. Uh, I hate to keep hitting on soil tests, but no, that is okay. the number one step to to having success in a garden. Right. So well, you need to know what your soil needs yes. if you start yes. right there. That's a good idea. Yes. Uh, uh, let's see. What about uh, w watering by mm -hmm. hand? I know. I know if you've got an acre, right. that, you know, maybe not, but right. the smaller ones, you can do the self-watering plants right. or have an automatic watering system. Yes, ma'am. Um, any so, pros and well, cons? Not really. I mean, you know, either works great. Mm -hmm. uh, you can buy the simple DIY drip kits from Lowe's and Home Depot, right. places like that, even online. Mm -hmm. Even up to an acre, we can, bigger than an acre, we what? can still run drip tape. It turn, It's a little different. It's <clears throat> bigger and uh, takes a little bit more work but we can still do drip irrigation on a big spot. Yeah. Um, watering by hand, obviously right. that's that's easy to do, yeah. do too. Main thing I would say is water in the morning. Uh, okay. Early morning is better than mid middle of the day because that's when our heat's oh, kicking up. Sure, yeah. I will say that, you know, summertime when that heat really <clears throat> picks up, you need to start watering about twice a day probably. Okay. And the, and the plants will tell you too what they need. Uh, you can tell right. they start wilting, that's a great time to start uh start adding some secondary watering in when i water in the afternoons i try not to wet the leaves because that's where our disease and fungus likes to take place okay so we want to, and plus other thing you know the leaves need a little bit of water but the what really needs to water is the roots so we want that's to true. water the roots more than anything All right. so that is that's key when watering is going to the roots okay so. and i can see it just depends on how much time you have yes. to put into it yes so that's the other yeah. thing is you know if you've got a lot of time then Hand watering is okay, but if you don't, uh, you might want to look at a drip system, 
with a hose bill oh. connector with a timer on it and set it and I don't want to say forget it but pretty much forget it <laughs> right you know you know it's gonna you still do need that. a check on it and stuff but oh. you can set it and forget it for the most good, part good wow there is a lot to it there it? is there, there is if you want to grow it right yes I guess yes. wow what about pest pest so oh. yeah th that is that's a good topic um if we're trying to protect our garden mm -hmm. we probably need we're going to need to use some pesticides right um but then again we uh, we can get by without using some pesticides most okay. of the time. Right. We, I, we like to use a, uh, integrated pest management, so we kind of make a threshold of okay, we're going to accept you know so many pests before we're going to spray. Okay. Um, and that, and that's 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 up to you. You know, you may think, hey, I've got one little aphid on this plant, I'm going to spray it, right. and then you know somebody else might say, well, I've got a whole plant ate up with aphids. Well, then and I'm fine with that. However yeah. you want to do it, that's right. fine. Um, we do use some trap crops, so in the sense, so like we'll that? we'll have a single plant that we're hoping this is going to attract the pests so that they don't go to our other pests. Oh, the problem yeah, with trap yeah. crops is when this plant <clears throat> gets full, we've now got they've got their little buffet over here, oh, and they, they go can, to another, they just go yeah. to another plant. So we have oh. to use some other stuff like different mm -hmm. traps, baits, stuff like that. Oh. So we we can also use uh, insect netting. Okay. But it requires more work, you know, because yeah. you've got to take it off to water it if you're Everything not on drip. Does, yeah. So there's there's pros and cons to everything. Okay. Um, so I know you asked too about uh, keeping pests out of the home. Yes. Uh -huh. Biggest the biggest way pests come in the house is in cardboard. So oh, all, think about yeah. all the cardboard we get, mm -hmm. Amazon packages. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. All all our coat everything. boxes, everything. Yeah. We want to keep that cardboard out. Make oh, wow. sure our, we've got good ceiling doors and windows. Mm -hmm. That's how they're going to get in. Wow. So, okay. Makes yep. me re rethink ordering. <laughs> yes. Not ordering. I'm going to order from Amazon <laughs> and other places. But yes, really think right. about that. I never thought about that. Now, I know pests. I'm mm -hmm. thinking aphids, right. tomato worms, all oh, that yes. kind of stuff. Deer, mm -hmm. rabbits. Right. Uh, so, you know, in those sense, we need to put up some type of fence, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a, a little electric fence or, you know, Deer are going to be harder to keep out. Tall fence. Yes, tall fence, tall fence. and, and uh, that's that's the best way to repel them. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I, like you said, there you can choose what kind yes. of pest pe pesticide mm -hmm. or what you want to do. A lot of different ways to do yep. that. Um, all right. Well, I tell you, we're going to pause for another commercial break, and we'll be right back and talk some more with Jacob. There's a lot in life to smile about. Are loose dentures or missing teeth keeping you from enjoying the things you love? Don't miss out on enjoying life's precious moments. You can be you again with affordable mini dental implants. You can smile again, laugh out loud, and have your self-confidence back. Let us help you make it memorable. I'm Dr. Rick Redmond. Call me today for a free consultation and give me the opportunity to change your life. Great. What am I going to do now? Time to visit Brown's Auto Collision. No problem at all. We've contacted your insurance company and we can get you back into regional condition right away. And I just want to remind you that all of our work is covered by a lifetime warranty. We're done. Wow, that was easy and looks great. Brown's Auto Collision. Where quality is no accident. The all-new Marble City Pharmacy in Sylacauga is your destination for the highest quality health care. Our remodeled and expanded pharmacy gives us the space to serve more patients. We've added a drive through window for those times when you don't feel like getting out of your vehicle. And we still offer delivery within city limits. We feature a full line of over-the-counter medications and supplements. And don't forget our stunning new gift department. New building, same great people. Marble City Pharmacy, here for life. Welcome back to Library Connection. I'm talking with Jacob Turner from the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. I have learned a lot, uh, which I'm going to pass along to my husband. He is the gardener yep. in our house. Now, you mentioned a little while ago a master gardener. Yes, what is a, a master gardener, so, and how do you become one? So it's a program that we offer through Extension. Um, it's actually whole U.S.-wide, uh, okay. but it's called Extension Master Gardeners. It's for folks that like gardening, okay. interested in become learning more about it. Not just, and we're not talking about just flower garden, 
we're talking about the whole thing. Okay. Um, basically, you're, you're learning all about horticulture from a horticulturist. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're offering the class in Talladega County for the first time since 2017, oh, this coming fall. <clears throat> um, class will be between August 8th through November 7th, every Thursday, okay. and it costs $150. We ask that you volunteer 25 hours. Yes. If you want to talk more about it, contact me and we can talk more. All but right. it's a great program. Great right. program. And I'm sure you get a lot of oh, booklets, yes. information. Yes, uh, well a lot of information. information. That is great. Yes. That is wonderful. Well, I'll have to put in a plug for our books. Yes. Talk a little bit about our books. I will throw out a couple that I have. I work on the ch children's floor, and okay. we have books for children, too. This one is Plant the Tiny Seed. It's very basic, but it's about plants and right. gardening and uh, bees and hummingbirds and things. And We Are the Gardeners, written by Joanna Gaines and okay. kids about okay. a garden they had. So we have lots uh, of in information along with these books about gardening. Um, so come get a book, exactly. call you. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe exactly. you should find out everything there. All right, before buying plants mm -hmm. or flowers, what are things we should consider? So we need to look at our site. So okay. we need to figure out what sun and sh or shade we're dealing with, mm -hmm. like we're talking about grass, figuring yes. out what we've got, because um, it matters for plants too. Mm -hmm. um, and then what kind of soil we've got, the how much care are we willing to put into them? You know, right. we, there are some that we can set and forget. You know, with just a little bit of water yeah. and here and there, we're good. Okay. Others are gonna require a lot more detail. Um, and then pest or pets and children. Think I mean, you know, dogs will tear up a yard, <laughs> right. and that's just part of it. <laughs> right. So if you're wanting a high-end yard, but you got a dog, you got <laughs> yeah. a trade-off. Especially there. a dog that stays outside. Yes. 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 Yeah. So and children are going to get in flower beds. <laughs> that's the other thing. Flowers are going to get broke. Balls right. are going to hit them. Stuff like that. Sure. So there's a lot of different things to consider when thinking about a landscape. And there's probably just about any color you oh, yes. want. Combining yep. colors, yep. containers, um, my front porch. <laughs> right. Different so on a, on a container for flowers, we're thinking about a filler, a okay. thriller, and a spiller. So, filler, thriller, spiller. spiller. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, what is that? So oh. so spiller, obviously, it's going to fall out, kind of like sweet potato vine yeah. that falls okay. out of the... Then a thriller is something that's going to catch your attention. And then just okay. filler, just kind of filling in the holes, just okay. little stuff. I have to write that down yeah. too for my, my containers. Right. That's great. Um, what kind of flowers, trees, or shrubs go well in our area? So, I know that's a broad question right. too. Well, it is, but um, we're in zone 8A in the okay. USDA heat map and or plant hardiness map, I mean, um, and that just changed. So we're still, oh. so all the plant cards are having to be updated. Okay. Every, it's, it's a major update right now, <laughs> but think. basically that just means our minimum winter temperature is between 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. um, so if a plant can't survive in that, then it's not for right, this area. That's right, that's true. Right. And don't grow something that has to be very hot all the time. Right. I mean, uh, anything uh, tro right. tropical, I guess. Right. Um, and another question, which is kind of about, when mm -hmm. is the best time to plant? I know right. that depends on what you're planting. Right, but. right. <laughs> so we can lay sod any time, as long as it's not freezing. Okay. Um, yeah. and, and so, you can do that best time to seed a new yard for warm season turf mm -hmm. is going to be early summer. So we're looking at May okay. to be getting some seed out like that. Um, if we're overseeding our Bermuda grass with the, for the winter time, we're going to do that between September and October. Okay. Um, you know, stuff like that. So I typically would say, obviously, we're not going to we're not going to plant before a freeze. Right. So we want to get make sure we get past that last freeze, last frost. Um, Easter is a good quote unquote calendar day to use right. or tax day even. Oh, so okay. for the most part, hopefully between those two dates, we're past the cold yeah. weather. This year, Easter is earlier it is. than normal. It so. is. So that's the other thing is, you know, just because it's on the calendar is Easter, <laughs> right. doesn't mean we need to be planting right then. We need to be looking ahead at the forecast right. and see what they're calling all for. Right. Consult your farmer's all, all <laughs> almanac. almanac and call you. <laughs> call, call the extension office. We'll <laughs> be happy to answer. That is right. Um, about greenhouses um, so, so you know okay. that's a great thing for homeowners if they're wanting to start seeds or yeah. even if they're growing wanting to grow some tropical plants up here okay. where it gets too cold a greenhouse right. is a great way to keep them warm um, the problem with a greenhouse is you're gonna have to have electricity or gas mm -hmm. to keep it warm or cool even not well you can't really keep one cool but right. you know we don't need it super hot right so in time. the summertime when it gets really hot we need to pull that heat out so we're gonna turn fans on and draw the heat out Oh, okay. um, so it, there is downfall to both sides of it, 
Um, but the, as far as building one goes, they're pretty easy. Uh, okay. The hardest part's going to be stretching the plastic across. Okay. So okay. pretty pretty easy. Okay. So. Well, we don't have a greenhouse. We just use our basement, <laughs> right. which I can't, right. works for us. Um, what I I know the difference in mm -hmm. seeds and plants, right. but what is the is there a reason for using seed, or maybe just because so, you want to? Just well, that's that's a great reason right there. Mm -hmm. Just because you want to. Mm -hmm. um, Starting from seeds can be cheaper than buying transplants. Uh, huh. You can buy a pack of seeds for a, a good pack of seeds for five dollars, right. and that's you know twenty-five seeds or more yeah. in it. Yeah. And then think about when you go to buy a single tomato plant, you're paying five dollars for that. Right. Once again, it goes back to how much time are you willing to put into it? Are you, do you have the time every day to check on it, water it? Mm -hmm. Uh, keep it on a heat pad, stuff like that, under grow lights. Right. There's a lot to starting from seeds that wow. a lot of people don't think about. It's more than just put it in a little bit of dirt and cover it up and water it. <laughs> and you should be doing that now, or oh, you yes. should have already well, done so it. Well, right now is a perfect time to go ahead and get mm -hmm. some tomato pepper seeds started. Um, cucumbers, we can start those from the ground. We can put those, whenever we plant, oh, okay. we can set those in the ground and go. Okay. No okay. need in transplanting cucumbers. Oh, wow. Uh, and you don't have to transplant tomatoes or anything. I do. <laughs> I go ahead and get them started. So I started some Valentine's Day. Oh, wow. You little, were ready. <laughs> little early, little early, but that's part of being in an extension. You got to have that's, stuff ready to go. That's <laughs> so, right. Well, and you must love tomatoes. <laughs> I don't. Oh, I don't I like tomatoes. Funny. I don't, but everybody else does. So That's true. Well, we've got I don't them. like them either. That's okay, but my husband does. Right. Wow. Well, I know this is a real basic question. This tells mm -hmm. I don't know very much. Annuals or perennials? Mm -hmm. I have to remember the difference every year. So every time. annuals grow for one one year. That's mm -hmm. it. Uh, one long season and then they're done. Okay. Um, I kind of think about like annual ryegrass, it's one and done. Okay. Uh, perennial ryegrass is two years, and then we're probably going to need to do it again. Okay. So that's that's an easy way to think about it. Perennial, two two or more. Right. And that's about it. Okay. Wow. Well, you have given me a lot to think about. I know I've got about a minute left. Uh, you said the master gardener, master gardener. classes yes, begin. Um, uh, they begin August eighth. Uh, you need to apply and pay between June first and June thirtieth. Okay. So it's one hundred and fifty dollars. Like I said, just call the extension office. Right. We'll be happy to. Talk more okay, about it. Okay. And if we have, if anybody has any questions, yes, you said you're more than welcome. Yes, ma'am. More than happy to help yes, them. Yes, ma'am. Your website is very easy to to get into. I, right. I found a lot of information well, good. there. That's good. Great. Or how to find out more information right. anyway. Right. Well, great. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Jacob, for yes, joining me and Not telling us about how to get our gardens and lawns ready. And thank you so much for joining me on Library Connection.